Hey guys, in this video we're going to show you how we installed our fuel system from the wing root area down to the gas glader. It's pretty straightforward, but I still thought that it was worthy of a video all on its own, so we'll step through how we did it up to this point. started by mounting the fuel selector valve and the gas collator to the mounting plate. These items came with the kit. We started by marking the location of the fuel valve and its bracket. We cut a notch out with a bandsaw that will allow the valve to slide into place. Next, we prepared the fuel valve and gas collator. First, we installed the quick drain valve on the bottom side of the gas collator. We used Loctite 565 anywhere there were NPT threads. The fuel selector and gas collator are joined with a pipe thread nipple. The gas collator came with fittings that accept NPT fittings. We installed those and then used NPT to AN fittings. The right side is close to a fuselage tube on our install, so we used a 45 degree elbow on this side. The gas collator bolts to the mounting plate. To ensure we drilled the holes in the correct spot, we first marked and drilled holes on a scrap piece of plexiglass and then use that to transfer the holes onto the mounting plate. Next, we installed the bulkhead tees where the front and aft fuel lines joined from both sides. Then, we drilled holes through all the door formers and all the locations the fuel lines will penetrate. After all the holes were drilled, then the fun part began, bending the fuel lines. I tried many methods of figuring out where to put the bins, determining the bend axis, and what the angle of each bin should be. The first was just using a piece of wire or something flexible that I could easily form along the path I wanted the fuel line to travel, and then try to replicate it with the fuel line. This worked okay, but was a long ways from an exact science. So it didn't work quite so well in areas where the tolerances were more strict. The second method I used was to mark where the bend should be and then draw a perpendicular line along the axis of the bend and then just increase the angle of the bend until it worked. This was more precise, but I still found it difficult to make the bend exactly where I needed it to be, especially when there were multiple bends close together. Most of the places we penetrated formers, we've used plastic snap bushings. When using these bushings, you need to make the flares after the fuel line is in place. The flaring process went like this. We cut the line to length and deburred it. Then we'd slide on the nut and sleeve, and in some cases, some heat shrink before that. Afterwards, we'd put a dab of oil on the head of the flaring tool, slide it on the fuel line until we hit the tool's depth gauge, and then clamp the tool down. At that point, you can just tighten down the head to create the flare on the end of the tubing. I'm not sure if this is common for EAA chapters, but our local chapter has a toolkit. 
The chapter has purchased some tools and many builders have contributed their own tools to this toolkit. Then other members can check them out and use them for their own project. Most of the tools needed to run our fuel lines we were able to borrow from another local builder through the chapter's toolbox. We purchased our 5052 aluminum tubing in six foot lengths because longer lengths were more expensive to ship. The downfall is a union is then required to get the aft fuel lines to the bulkhead tees. The front fuel lines come down along the fuselage tube along the window and then weave around a bit down to the bulkhead tee. We did the other side nearly identical with the exception of needing to penetrate the cargo door former. I installed a rubber grommet in this location but initially tried using a bulkhead 45 degree fitting. I thought a bulkhead fitting here would be convenient since I know I didn't have a piece of tubing long enough to make it all the way to the bulkhead T. But a 45 degree bulkhead fitting here would lower the fuel line more than I wanted. The fuel line at this point needs to be kept as high as possible to avoid creating a low spot in the fuel system while in a three point. After the front and aft fuel lines were joined at the bulkhead tees, we then ran short lines to connect the tees to the fuel selector valve. The method we've used here does create a little bit of a low spot right before the fuel selector valve. We're comfortable with that given a freshly sumped gasculator could easily accommodate the small amount of water that could potentially collect at this location. After all the lines were ran to the fuel selector valve, we went back and secured them. We used padded Adele clamps in most places. Anywhere that the fuel lines are close to contacting the fuselage tubing, we put some clear heat shrink around the fuel line, just to make ourselves feel better. In a couple of spots, we even doubled it up. Next, we cut a hole in the floorboard for the fuel selector valve. I used a jigsaw and then fine-tuned with a file. The floorboards also needed to be trimmed where the fuel lines penetrate. I just marked them in place and used a Dremel to remove material until I was satisfied with the clearance around the fuel line. Once the floorboard was trimmed properly, I fastened it in place and installed the fuel valve bracket. After it was in place, I drilled holes to secure the bracket to the mounting plate, as well as holes to fasten the bracket to the valve. Then we put the fuel selector valve knob back on to see how it looked. We've stopped our install here at the gasculator because from this point, the install will vary based on our engine and fuel metering selection. If we do a carbureted 0540, then we'll probably just exit the gasculator and loop around and penetrate the firewall here on the left-hand side. If we do a fuel-injected IO540, then we'll probably go the other direction and then it'll need to go through an auxiliary fuel pump and then penetrate the firewall on the right-hand side. As far as tips or lessons learned, I guess I wish I would have ordered more extra fuel line. I think I ordered like two extra pieces and I suppose that would be fine for somebody that's handy or a quicker learner than I, but I think I used the like 
pretty much twice as much fuel line as it would have taken to complete it. You know, making bins in not quite the right spot or a little too far or things like that. So I wish I would have ordered quite a bit of excess fuel line so I'd have just had to pay shipping once. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Okay, we have to pause a second. All right, so as soon as I say that's all I got for this one, all the serious people click off right away. So now that we just got the fun people left, I'll let you in on a little hack. So I'm sure you know that all the real YouTube pilots, they have one wheels and electric long boards and things like that. They're really awesome because they can just throw them in their plane and when they get where they're going, they can use that for ground transportation. I got to thinking to myself, I was like, you know, there's probably other people like me that have all their one wheel money going into a plane build or who knows what else. So I thought, you know, maybe I should share with them the cowboy version of this. You just harness up your cow dog. Sure, it might not look as cool as a one wheel, but I guarantee the charge of one of these will rival any of those electric options. We'll give you a demo. Okay, but pull.